How's it, misfits? Welcome to my archive tour. After watching so many sketchbook tours and having the idea from Echo Gillette to gather all of my art into binders and sleeves, I realized that the same thing could be applied to written stories. And if people can go through sketchbook tours, why can't I go through archive tours? But I'm adding my own twist. Instead of just leaving you with a description on how I came up with an idea or a basic view of a story within, I decided that this will be an intro to a series this series. The first two videos will be this one, the actual tour, where I go over the basic idea behind an explanation of stories inside. The next video will be a summary of each of these stories. Now this is where I'm going to need your guys' help. I want you to vote for which story slash stories you'd like to see first. Almost none of these are full multi-chapters yet, and they will not be read as such, at least not here. I'm going to, for the rest of this series, clean up, post, and voice each of these stories. Make sense? Sound good? Cool. Let's get started. This one I wrote when the Taken King DLC had just launched, which was four years ago at time of writing. It's part of a much larger idea in which I had planned to follow all of Destiny 1 throughout the main story, as well as throughout all of the DLC. Just, you know, the whole thing. The series would follow a hunter, guess which class I play, throughout the story. I loved the idea of Mara and her brother, but I felt like it was never done to what I wanted, so I changed it. You're gonna see that a lot in this binder. This particular story is a flashback to the first meeting my guardian had with the queen and her brother. That's set, framed, during the Taken King as the hunter, a night stalker at this point. Here's news of the queen's apparent demise. Here, I was just getting down my thoughts and opinions on the new DLC in story form. You know, like a weirdo. Okay, so here's another thing you're probably going to see a lot. Stubborn, injured characters that hide or otherwise play off their injuries and must be dragged, pulled, carried, or otherwise manhandled to seek help. Yes, it's very specific. No, I don't know why it's my thing. It's like a PG-rated kink. A pink? A pachink? Sounds like something a pachinko machine would make. Anyway. This story is a snippet of an idea I had in the Star Trek universe. I'm just playing around with characters, Bones and Spock in this case. What's the writing form of doodling? Drabbling? Sure. This one is about an engineer who's been injured but hid the wound Pachink! from the other members of the Enterprise, particularly Bones, where she gets caught in her lie by Spock. This isn't set in any particular AU, honestly. I think both the movie and the original fit. Reminds me, I have an entire series I had planned for Star Trek that I'll have to show you guys at some point. Hey look! Pachink! Yep, another one of those character hiding her injuries and having to be manhandled to seek help. I haven't played Overwatch in a while, but I was a Mercy and Diva main if anyone was curious. But I still love the idea of Overwatch, particularly the characters. So, of course, I had to play around with the characters, you know, as you do, and add my own character in. Oh yeah, all of these stories will have OCs of some kind, it's just how I write. This particular one is Maria. This story is set in the past with Blackwatch. Maria either works for or works under Gabriel. This was before even the Blackwatch skins came out, I believe. For Genji and McCree, that is. That's a long time ago. In this story, I have an injured Maria being dragged to mercy by Ree. Go figure. Pajink. Oh, okay, yay! I love this one! Okay, so I haven't watched past My Hero Aka Season 2 because of the story. I promised myself that I'd finish this before I could watch the next season. That was before Season 3 had even started. I know that this is taking me too long, but I just know that I'm not going to be able to finish this if I watch more. I've managed to avoid spoilers so far, please be kind. But I'm not stupid. This story, being set where it is, won't hold up. Some things are just not going to be correct. So this is set in year two of UA at the next sports festival. I know it's dangerous, but I'm just a dangerous person. <laughs> so this follows a quirkless business class student who actually competes in the sports festival. I need to finish this one. Please vote for this. So here's another lesser attempt at my Hiroaka. This is me trying to figure out what kind of quirk I'd have. I came up with one based on an event where I, under the strength of my own power, shrugged my shoulder out of my own socket and put it back in. Not kidding. So I decided to try a powerful but unstable quirk. Gave me an excuse to use Aizawa and who didn't want that? I don't mind the story, but take two, business class, is way more my speed. Okay, more injury stories. But this time we're helping the hero. 
Not a clever title, but it gets the point across. I'm just drabbling here again. I like Aqualad, Calderam, not Garth, and wanted to make my own canon version of him. I.e. how I would see the definitive version of him. As well as kind of address how civilian life would be in the superhero world. I didn't get far with this idea, but I like what I have. Okay, so this is the type of story I like to call, I liked my idea better than the thing I'm writing about, so let's never finish either. Wordy, I know. So I sat down one day and started watching through Thundercats 2011. I got to the... spoilers? The part where they mentioned the war where I got to thinking, what if they were at war with, and nearly wiped out, humans? So I created a character, a human, who finds a lost kitten in the destroyed city and, instead of killing him like her clan wants, leaves her family forever to do the right thing and save his life. She spends the first quarter of the story chasing down rumors of the Cat King and eventually finding him. That's where this snippet takes place. I liked the idea and wanted to explore the first baby steps to the healing between the races and, understanding from a more outside point of view, how people see Lionel as a budding king. I, uh, I never finished watching the series. And this is Taiga being a protective and suspicious older brother based off of this. Just a continuation, really. Okay, so I'm a bit of an Otome fiend. I'm 25 and have been single all my life. What do you want from me? And of the many Otomes I've played, Hakuoki is by far my favorite. One thing I wasn't so keen on in the story was the fact that I, meaning the insert character you play as, knew how to fight and was good enough to praise, but, you know, didn't fight. Also, Chizuru is terrible at the whole I'm a dude thing. So I fixed it. Again. I'm not so keen on this one, my first attempt where my character saves Chizuru, but the next one, which has no title, I love. I further elaborated the idea of a character I wanted to see in this game, changed some stuff around, and added a stubborn character who's forced to get help. Bajing. I explored the characters a little better too, mainly Heisuke, Sano, and Shinpachi. I used to know this game like the back of my hand. So I wanted to write out playing the piano and I used B-Man for it. Cool? Cool. Oh god. So this one is thick. With two C's. I grew up with Transformers, so it's been a part of my life for a while. In that time, I've written tons of Transformers stories over several different universes. This is a compilation of the ones I wrote to, um, fix Bayformers. I enjoy it fine, but this thing is old. As in, only two Bayformers even existed old. Not much else to say, I'll just have to read it if you vote for it. Ah, uh, Skyrim. How many hours I've sunk into you? This was an attempt to express my frustration and sorrow with having to attack Whiterun because I sided with a sexy guy with a deep voice who never puts out. Never doing that again. The story did not turn out great, so I tried again. Here! This didn't work either, but hey, I stuck it out for an extra page before I scrapped it. This is based off of a dream I had involving Rumble and Ravage from Transformers, in which I'm trapped in the second story of a bombed out department store with them. Pretty much shot for shot, what it says on the tin, straight from my dream. Woo! Avengers! Is this the first Avengers one? Hmm. This is set just before, slash, during Age of Ultron. I've been told I'm hard to read before, by a lot of people. So I decided to see how that would translate in a setting with mind readers. Simple, but fun. Not the symbiote kind, calm down. This is actually a snippet from my own retelling of Alice in Wonderland, my favorite classic book. In this we follow, not Alice, but Jackie, Alice's friend, who follows her down the rabbit hole to save her. I wanted to explore it from the perspective of an outsider looking in, and sort of a person who wasn't as deceived by the LSD-ness of Wonderland. I really want to continue this one and flesh it out. Maybe I'll make it into a manga? Alice is in the public domain, right? Honestly, this was me writing to embrace my role as a Slytherin. A role I was given, not once, but twice from Pottermore. Both originally and with the new algorithm. I also set my character as just a year under the twins instead of at Harry's age. Never planned much further than that. Does anyone remember Shaolin Showdown? I loved that show. Particularly when they introduced Chase Young. What do you want from me? I like calm, strong guys. Not to mention this guy, Jason Marsden. He voiced my childhood. This story is Chase Young based and cringy as hell. I wrote it over 10 years ago. What do you want from me? 
for something much more recent. I started playing Fate Go a while ago <laughs> and stopped not long after. But to make sense of and use some of the servants I got, I wrote a story. Pretty much how I handle all of my drabbles, again, they're pretty much doodles. Another one of my favorites, so I want to finish this one too, will you vote please? The idea I had is this. It's not uncommon for fanfiction writers to do the thrown into a fantasy world stories, but what are the consequences of a person ending up in a world with so many dangerous secrets where they themselves know so much? Villains galore. I also wanted to explore a character who isn't as questioning or disbelieving, just takes it at face value and figures out how to survive instead, using the knowledge she's being hunted for. Another good one, this time in Dragon Age Inquisition. I love the Iron Bowl. I wrote this story basically wondering, hmm, what if you combine a fear demon with a sloth demon and trap our heroes in a nightmare world? This character is not an Inquisitor, but rather a companion and a leader of a small splinter group that broke off of a larger group. She is, however, Kadan to bowl because I couldn't help myself. I also wanted to explore with, and play with, my three favorite characters. Krem, Cole, and, of course, the Iron Bull. Uh, this one is actually finished. So, if you want to vote for this one, it's less work for me. We're on a roll. Another favorite of mine, and another one that's already finished. I wrote this in the middle of watching JoJo's Part 2, before I knew that Santana is unimportant but also to throw them around by their tiny, tiny waists. Seriously, look at how small. I like how this one turned out, but I did have a lot of creative liberties available to me with Santana since he's not given that much to work with in the first place. Fun fact, part two is not my favorite part, nor is it my favorite Jojo. Oh, fun, I like this one. This was written just after Ben was announced as Doctor Strange. I had seen Strange in Ultimate Spider-Man and loved how his Sanctum Sanctorum looked in it, so I wanted to play around with the building. I also gave him an apprentice. That's the OC in this one. I wrote this since I wanted to explore that, and I wanted to explore a realization I had had about how I feel and control feelings as compared to a friend of mine. Apparently I'm weird, but it fits. I'm not misfit for nothing. This. This is old. This is an old idea. My first Fire Emblem game was Radiant Dawn. I love the characters, particularly the Lagoos. These Lagoos. Plus this guy. So I wrote a story about a modern person, it's me, let's be honest, getting thrown into Fire Emblem. This idea got so complicated. I was planning to turn it into its own full series, but I haven't, yet. I wanted to try my hand at such a big cast with such a complex story. These next three, one, two, three, are all part of that story. This one is a rewrite from the original first chapter. This one is a rewrite of a snippet I've done that takes place later in the story. And this is the original version of that snippet. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wrote this when the beta for Overwatch came out. I actually started a comic for this, too. I was tired of playing the same old maps, so I made my own. An escort mission. Don't boo me. Maybe for this one I'll include slash finish my comic to release at the same time. Let me know in the comments if this is something you'd be interested in. Oh, I love this idea. Basically, Dovahkiin gets thrown into Middle Earth, before the Hobbit if I remember correctly. And the two worlds are starting to merge together because of Alduin. Dovahkiin, being a dragon slayer with three dragons of her own, no, I wrote this before, Chicky Bob and her dragons, doesn't have any problems per se as she hunts for Alduin, but she needs to return quickly because her magic and her thum are fading and slowly killing her. <laughs> Here we go. I wrote this story after The Force Awakens first came out. I wanted to explore an idea I had where Ben isn't the only one left out of Luke's students, but rather one other whom the Jedi took on around the same time as Ben, before the others was able to escape and hid by smothering and basically severing her connection to the Force. She hides and moves around, afraid of Ben because she knows she can't kill him. I wanted interweaving flashbacks and to explore a shy, bouncy-haired child version of Ben, 
and how he could have grown up to resent his parents, his uncle, and everything he'd been trained for. These next three are all based on my mutant character, Camilla, this nugget. She was born from the question, what kind of powers would I have as a mutant? I went for a mimicry and decided to have her copying seeable abilities such as healing or optic blasts, so she's able to use them for a short time. I gave her a big weakness, however, because I love tormenting my characters, in that she gets any given power to its full potential, and they stack. If she copies too many, or the wrong ones, she could die, or worse, destroy everything. You know, the fun stuff. This first one is Mimicry's introduction in the X-Men universe. This next one is Camilla's first time using Scott's powers, also in the X-Men universe. And this last one is Mimic's beginnings in Ultimate Spider-Man. I had planned for her to be without powers for the first season, and that she'd get her powers in the beginning of the second, where this particular snippet takes place. And this last one is going to be quick. This one is based off of an episode of Ultimate Spider-Man, in which Hawkeye is introduced and at one point loses his bow. This is my headcanon of what happened when he went to go get it. And that's it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Really, 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 please, please, please vote on which story you would like to see a full read-through and a full posting of. I really want to get these done. It's a big incentive for me to get these finished, as well as for me to be able to share these with you. The story will be divided into From the Archive Tour Volume 1, and I'll be making a playlist for you to click. The next video will be a reading of all of the summaries of all of the stories involved in this book. If you're interested in any of those, you can vote over there too when the video comes out. After those two come out, I will also be posting every single one of these stories to my Archive of Our Own page as well as to fanfiction if you want to read it instead of listening. They will come out as the voiceovers come out, so they will both be released at the same time as they show up. I think that's about it. Please, please, please vote, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!